Welcome. Today I'm here with Dr. Patton. Dr. Patton, we would like to talk to you about your experience treating Achilles tendon ruptures and how this technique has allowed you to attract patients into your practice. So my training treating Achilles tendon rupture surgically was with an open uh, Krakow locking stitch technique, which really disrupts the blood supply to the Achilles. And so with a new technology like the percutaneous Achilles repair system, or PARS, that has allowed uh, this technique to, to protect the surrounding soft tissue around the Achilles tendon to allow for a more reliable uh, repair, uh, stronger fixation, and allowing for earlier rehabilitation. This has gotten around in the community, and I've had patients come out of uh, other insurance uh, networks to seek out this repair. Uh, memorably, uh, one of my colleagues, a physician in the area, uh, was dancing a little bit too vigorously at a, at a wedding and ruptured his Achilles. And so he sought me out. We performed this percutaneous Achilles repair system, allowing him earlier motion, faster rehabilitation so that he can dance with his new bride. What was it that intrigued you about the Arthrex solution for this pathology? With the small incision approach, I can protect the surrounding soft tissue, get locking uh, stitches into the proximal uh, Achilles, uh, with the suture tape uh, locking stitch, and then anchor that distally, uh, avoiding the complications that come with knots. We know from the literature that knots, even tied by the best surgeon, have a variable result and they can sometimes loosen, which makes me nervous that the patient won't have a reliable result. So what's wonderful is that there is a knotless approach with the Achilles mid-substance speed bridge where those sutures from locking stitches proximally can be locked into bone uh, with a swivel lock so that I don't have to worry about making my repair suboptimal. I want, it, I want to be able to sleep at night knowing that this patient can get back to dancing as soon as possible. Oh, that's great. Now what else do you like about the PAR suture tape kit? So with that system I can get two locking stitches and a third crossing stitch which allows for six core strands of suture tape across the repair. And the hand literature shows that the number of core strands crossing uh, the defect allows for early motion and better reliability, decreasing scar formation in the peritoneon. So that really gives me a, a durable repair that I can allow uh, my patients early rehabilitation so they don't have to be in a cast, uh, which for patients that matters. Can you explain the rationale behind the fixation of the proximal Achilles? So the idea is to optimize the myotendinous uh, overlap, get those uh, tendon edges together uh, so that they can heal. We know that it will heal with non-operative treatment mm -hmm. in an elongated position which decreases the muscle strength and the um, up and go uh, speed of the patient in the long term. Should a surgeon have any concerns with this technique? In my experience, I really haven't seen um, any, any troubles with it. The patients are almost evangelical about it. They, want, they tell, tell others about it, uh, which is nice to build, to build my practice. Things that I've done to make sure that I don't have some of the pitfalls that can come with any surgery, uh, pain around the incisions, those kind of things that I've tried to minimize um, those secondary effects, um, is making sure that the swivel locks are countersunk into the bone I try and avoid uh, the traditional dead man's angle, and I come in at about 30 degrees into the calcaneus, right at the margin of the Achilles uh, insertion onto the, onto the calcaneus, making sure that the swivel locks are not uh, impinging on one another, but they're off axis uh, to a small degree, uh, has really led me to, I've done dozens of these without any negative side effects. Can you comment on your post-op protocol for this? So postoperatively, I like to protect the skin for two weeks to make sure that that's healed up really well. We don't want an infection, of course. But as soon as the skin is healed up, I like to get them moving as soon as possible. I think that in any tendon repair, early motion, early rehabilitation is vital. So they're moving right away as soon as the skin is healed after two weeks. I like to protect their weight bearing uh, with a uh, controlled ankle motion or cam boot uh, with a two-inch heel wedge for three weeks. Then I lower it to a one inch heel wedge for another three weeks, and then neutral position for another month, and then allow them to get into regular shoes after three months postoperatively. So many times my patients come in at the two month mark and they're already walking around in tennis shoes because they're feeling uh, so good. Uh, 
And after that, then they can get back to athletic activity after about three months. Um, and to try and keep them away from explosive uh, push off uh, av until three months postoperatively. But uh, again, they're doing so well. My patients are saying at five months, I'm hiking five miles with no pain. And ready to dance. And ready to dance for their wedding. That's really exciting. Now, can you provide uh, any more feedback or comments uh, just regarding the overall experience that you've had with this technique? What's exciting is to see my local community evolve with me as this, this technique, I think, really brings something to the patient population. I think this is a leap forward in where technology and engineering has advanced uh, patient outcomes. And so other physicians in my community are catching on and realizing we need to evolve with technology. Thank you, Dr. Patton.